Hello. Well, okay. <laughs> there we are. Okay, we are live. Um Okay. Hope you liked my funky countdowns. Um okay. Right place, right time. Woo woo. 11.03 Pacific Standard Time. Okay, so first thing before I get into um, all the welcoming is that be sure that you allow StreamYard um, access to your Facebook because if you don't, then when you comment and stuff, what I'm in StreamYard, so I have like this sort of background filming thing on my computer laptop right now with StreamYard from my side, and I have no idea who's commenting. Um, unless when you comment, you say your name or you allow StreamYard to um, access Facebook. So if you do that for me, because um, I'm I'm just going to have one screen in front of me and I want to see who's commenting and what's going on, because I'm just in this room by myself. So I'd love to see like what you guys are thinking, what's happening as, as this happens. Okay. Tanya is in the waiting room. That's perfect. Okay. We got five people watching live. Hello, Rivka. Hello. Funky, yes, we like it. Oh yeah, you like my opening music? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, StreamYard, it should, it should be giving you a link right in Facebook. Like with this post above it, it should um it should give you a little link that says allow StreamYard to access. Let me check in the group here. Let's see. Yeah, you might have to like click on more or whatever. But when I look in the Facebook group, it says make Summerfield is live now. Welcome. Tanya shares with us how gratitude and leaning into an active Holy Spirit listening, leaning into active, there's an extra word there, active Holy Spirit listening actually brought about a medical miracle. So that's what we're about to talk with Tanya about. Um, and then it says, I'm going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name. And then it has the streamyard.com slash Facebook link. So if you click on that, then it's going to um, connect and then I'll be able to see who's commenting. Nanette Foster. Hi. Yay. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you saw my picture. Okay. Let me just change this. I'll keep tapping the table. I don't know if you saw my photo, but we have a lot of snow. I haven't lived on the Sunshine Coast for very long, but apparently this is not normal. It's definitely not normal for Vancouver. Um, so that's where I'm coming to you from. I'm about an hour and a half outside Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, otherwise known as Pacific Northwest. And I'm on the Sunshine Coast and I live in a cute cabin-ish place with like surrounded by trees and a beautiful river behind me. Um, if you knew my whole story, you'd know that this is like <laughs> somewhat miraculous and beautiful that I get to live here right now. Um, so very grateful about that. Um, okay, looking at your questions. Okay. And so welcome here. I am excited. There's going to be so many different kinds of people in here. And, um, you know, I'm still learning about the marketing and the wording and all that. So a lot of different kinds of people are drawn drawn in here. One day I'll have like, you know, a thousand people and my 
wording will be like so specific and I don't know. It's it's such a interesting learning process. I know a lot of you are entrepreneurs and you're also creatives and everything like that. So sometimes I say like behind the stuff scenes because I know you know what I'm talking about. Um, okay. Let me look at my notes here. Um, okay, so if you haven't registered with the register link, make sure you do that. Um, it helps me out because I can see how many people went through that process and registered. But also, I am going to do a giveaway at the end of the week. And only the people who have registered through that link will be eligible for the giveaway. And then I made a post about it. I won't say it all now, but um, like those who are participating and commenting, there's action like that coming. Those people will all be put into the giveaway. Um, that Feel free to invite a friend. Um, and then remember to join us tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're doing a Yahweh circle. I sent an email about that. So if you're the type of person who likes to read and get more details about that reading style, you can do that. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit right now. A Yahweh circle is a time on Zoom. I've done them in person as well, too. And we come together and we say what we're grateful for. Um, we journal it first, and then we talk about it. You can share or not share. And then I, I some people already know this, so we, I just kind of remind them. And some people have never heard about it before, so I tell them what it's about. I call it active listening prayer. Um, and it's a time where we're listening into Holy Spirit. And it could be through a vision, through a word, um, a feeling, or a memory reminder. And... That is, those are some ways that Holy Spirit or spirit can speak to us. I call it active listening prayer because it's not like we're just petitioning source for things, but we're actually like having a conversation and, and then getting like information back. Um, and in the Yahweh circle, we're not praying for any prayer request, um, but it's a time to receive love notes for our heart. So it's like, it started because... Um, it's just, I was like, you know, I don't want to like get into a theology discussion. I don't want to have to like teach a bunch of theology or something, but I wanted a time where we could come together and instead of just talking about things, actually experience. And like, we all, we all know this, but to set this time aside, it's like some people go into the woods and some people have their quiet time and um, sometimes we forget we need to take time to do that. So like coming together, setting apart that time, focusing on it and um, listening together. Sometimes the things match each other. Like sometimes the messages that we get kind of match each other. And that's really interesting. So it's a time to lean into Holy Spirit and receive love notes for our hearts. We're not asking for things. Um, well, we're asking for one thing. We're asking to feel that um, like that beautiful heart love it's like holy spirit like tell us who you think we are um like tell us how you see us how do you see me um and it's good it's always good because we are cherished and beloved um so it's a really beautiful time so that is happening tonight that's what i'm facilitating um it'll be i think it'll be in Streamyard. um and you'll have to message me for the link if you want to be live i suggest you be live because then you'll get to share with us um I'll probably stream like the first five minutes in there just so to see it's happening, but I don't really want to stream the whole thing in there because it's kind of um, personal and there's like a time, like 10 minutes while our eyes are closed and we're listening. So I don't really want that to be on camera. Um, so if you want to join the Yahweh circle tonight, send me a DM or comment and I'll DM you and make sure that you ask me specifically for that live link so that you can be live with us because I'm not going to stream it like this into the Facebook, not the whole thing, but I will for five minutes so that you see that it's, we're live and it's happening. Okay. That is some of that. Um, all right. So we're going to be here for seven days and usually people don't say this, but I'm telling you ahead of time because I really like to plan and organize and we all have schedules and stuff. So I'm telling you there's a bonus day. So there's a bonus day, whether it be 11 o'clock and a 7 PM session on the eighth day. Um, we've got 12 guests sharing, two men and 10 women. And as we go on, you're going to get to know me. Um, you're going to get to know me better and hear about my faith journey and stuff as we go through the speakers. I did the first pre-recorded session with Sarah Camille. She's um, a beautiful artist, a prophetic artist. 
And um, so I did that first recorded session with her yesterday and it was so good. <laughs> and um, I can't wait for you guys to see that. That's going to be on the bonus day. Um, but what do I want to say just to start off so you know who I am? If you've seen some of the Facebook posts and some of the um, emails, you're kind of getting a picture of it. But I've been a Christ follower since I was six and it's been a long, interesting journey for me. I... I haven't been married, but I say it's kind of like a relationship or marriage where like you keep like I keep choosing Jesus like every day. I keep choosing the same spiritual path every day. Um, so it's been 33 years now, and it's not like I know everything after 33 years or something. It's just been lots of different experiences. Um, there was a time in my life where I used to say, like, I'm not Christian enough for the Christians and too Christian for the non-Christians which is kind of that feeling that all humans have, like, okay, where the F do I fit in? Um, because I wasn't feeling like I totally fit in with the Christians and I wasn't totally fitting in with people who wouldn't call themselves Christians. But it's been a very awesome and wonderful and challenging journey of just like accepting myself for who I am and what I am. <laughs> um, and now I use this phrasing like, holistic, sometimes I say hippie, mystic, Christ follower. And the reason I say Christ follower is because myself included and others, we have, especially I'm like, I'm in Canada, we're in North America, lots of us are in the US, um, but even in other English speaking countries and stuff, it seems the same that we have, there's a lot of like weird stuff that's been stuck to the, the name Christian. So I don't necessarily want to introduce myself to new people and say I'm a Christian because sometimes it'd be like, oh my gosh, I had that experience one time or like for 10 years. Um, and you don't know what other, like what people's experience with this word is. So I noticed that if I say Christ follower, that feels clearer and better for me because I am a follower of Christ. Um, so that's what I started saying. And then the mystic part, a lot of people ask me, well, what, what does that mean? What does mystic mean? And I think that's a question we're going to unpack as we go along here, because it's hard for me to answer that super clearly. And maybe there is a super clear answer. And if you have an answer, put it in the comments. What does mystic mean to you? Um, but what it means to me right now is kind of like outside the box Christianity um, <clears throat> of like exploring things that we don't always talk about in church necessarily. For me, it's like looking more at the heavenly, discovering more about angels because like growing up, uh, I mean, people talk about angels, but in the church, it wasn't really, um, like I heard quote unquote, new age people talking about angels more than in the church. And there's like Bible verses and stuff, but oftentimes it's like, well, that doesn't happen now, or that wasn't explicitly said, but it just feels like that doesn't happen now or whatever. Um, but when I hear and I'm going to use different terms, so I hope that it won't offend anyone. <clears throat> and I'm still discovering like vocabulary to use around all these things. But um, you might hear me say new age a lot and maybe don't identify with that. But I'm just like making generalizations here. Um, but like new age, the new age community will talk about angels and there's like books about angels and it's so cool. But as a Christian Christ follower, when I saw those books, I was like, oh, my gosh. I don't think we're supposed to talk about that. Like we're not supposed to focus on the angels. Um, but I've listened, I've been listening to Justin Abraham and some other mystics, modern mystics, um, talk about angels. And I'm just like, it's a good thing. Like a heaven's full of angels. We have, um, <clears throat> what do you call them? Like the angels that were born with, that were assigned to us when we were conceived, probably not just born. Um, and like, there's all these cool things to learn about angels. So I'm excited about that. With that said, tune in tomorrow because Terry is going to tell us a lot about angels, and I'm really excited about that. <laughs> okay, what else do I need to say? Um, oh, yeah, there will be a daily assignment. Um, I have um, network researched this word, and some people who are like myself do not like the word assignment. Um, so <laughs> sometimes, so it's assignment, aka a joy bringing action. So every day I will assign an action that will bring joy. Um, so I've made a Canva post and that will be in the Facebook group. So 
what um, keep a lookout for those and everyone who gets all those assignments done um, those people are entered into the giveaway and some people just like accomplishing things. I like accomplishing things. So do the assignment every day. It's going to bring you joy. It's going to be good. And it's actually really simple. It's not complicated. All right. I'm reading your sounds wonderful, refreshing time, revelation, eighth day, new beginnings. Yeah, eight. That's probably Rose. I can't see who that is, but I think it's Rose. Um, Christ was the ultimate mystic, right? Yeah, totally. Love hearing about your story. Thank you. And the whole heavenly host of angels rejoiced in the birth of the Messiah. Awesome. Okay. Well, I am going to invite Tanya on now. And are you ready, Tanya? Backstage? Ready to go live? <laughs> okay. Here we go. <laughs> Add to stage. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Exciting. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yay. Got some nice sunlight there coming through the window. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for being with us. And I know that there are some life things going on and that you're a bit under the weather with a cold right now. Yes. So I appreciate you pressing forward and still being here with us. Um, you can't, my friend said you can't really see it, but just so you know, I have like eczema across the top of my forehead and by my eyes. Um, I was like, that's perfect timing because I'm going to be live all week. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but whatever <laughs> um okay so yeah where are you coming from where are you right now so i'm in ontario canada um i'm in a very small town that um is about an hour and a half away from toronto so it's uh i live on a lake a shimong lake is the lake i live on and nice. um and i'm actually in my my dream home the home that i'd always uh, dreamed of living in. And I put on a, a vision board one day many years ago and uh, I, I'm living it. I'm living my dream. That is so good. I love it. My mom did that one time too and she got her dream house. <laughs> so cool. I'm just, I'm trying to find where this ticker thing is. I'm trying to take it off. There we go. Um, what does this do? Okay. <laughs> I've got all these buttons at the side. Um, okay, so you're in Ontario, kind of in the woods, and um, you're in your home right now? Yes, yeah. yeah. So we just built this home um, and just moved in in September. So Whoa, this is my newly good. new uh, office. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, and your dog just had surgery, is that right? Yes, yeah. He just had surgery yesterday, so we're in recovery mode. So we're just kind of laying low today and just uh, and we soaking also, up the, the cuddles. <laughs> we also didn't get much sleep last night. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your dog's name? Milo. Milo. And how old is he? Milo just turned 12 on Monday. So oh we just gosh. celebrated his birthday and then he had a spa day Tuesday and surgery Wednesday. So he's had a full birthday week. <laughs> I like that. Spa day and surgery. It's a good combo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and you're married and you have four daughters. Is that right? Yes. Married with four daughters. And uh, my daughters are my biggest gifts and my biggest teachers. I always say that uh, each one of them have taught me something and my my youngest, who is currently home with me, the only one that's living at home right now, she's 16. She uh, she is the one that slowed me down and helped me learn to just take in each moment. Oh, I think oh Milo's coming in to join us. Oh, <laughs> um, and <laughs> yeah, so each one has been my biggest teacher, and she's just helped me simplify life and slow down and just breathe. Hmm. Okay, yeah. that's a very good segue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking it would be great at the beginning of every of every session of these interviews. I'm excited and my like heart rate goes up and then I start like talking really fast and then I'm like, whew. But I, I'm excited and I want us to be excited, but I also like want to be calm so that we can like ground ourselves in this yummy conversation. Um, so I was thinking we can take three deep breaths. Um, but also, are you familiar with tapping? Like this this tapping technique. So you, <clears throat> you can just um, tap your body wherever feels good for you. And I find that that just like, and the audience can do this too. 
if you're in the car, don't tap with both your hands, please. Um, <laughs> um, and I just find that this, I mean, this just feels so good for me. Just is like, oh yeah, my body. Oh yeah, I'm grounded. Oh yeah, I'm good. <laughs> it's all good. And that, that just makes me be able to like not talk so fast and stay calm. <sighs> okay. And then we can take three deep breaths as well. <sighs> that feels good, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. So the other day, um, you and I, you, t you shared a bit of your story. Um, we were talking on messenger without video, I guess. And, um, I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. She needs to be the first person that I have conversation with. Um, because this challenge is called gratitude and miracles. And as I explained to some of the speakers as well, um, some people have experienced, like there's different kinds of miracles, right? Like the birth of a child is a miracle just in like everyday life. The fact that our organs and everything do their things every day. I think that's a miracle. <laughs> um, and there's also miracles where like, you know, feathers pop out of the air and angels appear to you. Um, there was someone in my life where she was ill and two angels appeared to her and just like comforted her. And after those angels talked to her, the situation, the medical situation that she was having in the hospital under emergency went away. And the doctor's like, we don't know what happened. We don't know how that happened so quickly. <laughs> and my friend like told us like these two angels came to visit me and sat on the end of my hospital bed. Um, so there's all these different kinds of um, miracles and heavenly encounters. And gratitude, um, as we'll get into in your story, God has been teaching me, Spirit has been teaching me that like gratitude is an atmosphere shifter. So even when I started doing the Yahweh circles and I didn't quite know what the shape of them was going to look like, Spirit was very clear, start with gratitude, like open with gratitude in those Yahweh circles because whatever is happening, it like shifts the atmosphere. Um, so you've already said that you're very grateful for your home and that you're freshly in there just last September. Um, I'll share one thing I'm grateful for today. I am grateful for my friend that was here before I went live and fixed up all my lighting to make sure it was good. <laughs> I was like, oh, that was very helpful. <laughs> and we had breakfast together. And so like, I feel good. I had some in-person interaction before being on camera. Um, so I'm grateful for that today. And yeah, so gratitude like shifts the atmosphere. And uh, like, I don't have, you know, factual evidence for this or something, but I've noticed that it seems to be, and with your story and with everyone else's that I've heard too, it's like gratitude sort of opens up these heavenly avenues it's like sometimes we're asking for something we're praying for something we're wanting something to shift and change um but like we're holding doors closed with different actions in our life and we don't realize like we're like holding the door closed we're like lord open the door and god's like um i'm gonna need you to like take your hand off the door and mm -hmm. stop trying to keep it closed so that i can yes like that avenue can actually flow for you <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, and so it seems like gratitude is like one of those keys, like one of those key is not even the right word. There's like some kind of word that means like, like the billowy cloud would like move out of the way, but the billowy cloud was somehow like a solid force stopping something. <laughs> so like, I don't know what the mystical word for that is, but like this moving away and then this like avenue and you're like, oh, it's like there's flow and it's clear and like gratitude seems to do that. Would you agree? Absolutely. I've, yeah. I've seen it so many times in my life. And uh, I have a, a spiritual mama and she, she once said to me, I've never met anyone that's so full of gratitude and has had so many miracles in their life than, than you. So wow. I have seen it more than once happen in my life. So would you be able to 
share with us and I might inter I might interject and ask a question from time to time, but would you be able to share with us yeah, your experience, you said that you sort of found gratitude and then you adjusted some things and then there was this, these events that happened. So would you share that with us? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in, uh, it was probably about 2017, I started getting some really, um, a lot of symptoms. Like I, as I shared, I have four daughters and a husband and, you know, a very, very busy lifestyle. And I was working um, as a recreation therapist with children with special needs. So a lot of a lot of things on my plate and a lot going on. So I had, you know, symptoms where I had tingling going down my arm, I felt like a, you know, a knife being jabbed into my brain, like I was right. blurred vision, like so many things going on with my body, my body was basically like shutting down. And I, I couldn't keep my eyes open. I was extremely exhausted. And, you know, I was, this was like know, six years ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 2017 is when the symptoms started. Um, and I, I'm also very holistic. So, you know, I, I am, and I'm very good at taking good care of my body. You know, I know that, uh, you know, my, it's important to take good care of our bodies. And so, you know, I did all the things and took, um, you know, very good care of myself and my, my girls, but, um, in doing so, I really felt like it was, you know, it it was just, it was a lot, right? Like it was a lot to, and I always took care of everybody else before taking care of me, right? So, and then about, I probably went through it for about a year of these really bad symptoms. And then 2018, I finally was kind of encouraged to go see a doctor because um, I kind of did everything holistically and with na um, natural ways and, and that. And so I went and saw a doctor and the doctor um, diagnosed me with MS and uh, situational depression. What does that stand for again? Um, multiple sclerosis. Right. And that's like a nerve thing, bone thing? Um, so I, they found lesions on my brain um, and it, um, it's an autoimmune, uh, disorder is what, um, yeah. So, and when I looked it up and anyone I talked to, I had every symptom, every textbook symptom that, you know, um, that, uh, MS like was in the, in the textbook or what the doctors, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. say MS is this autoimmune disorder. What I just, I'm curious, um, like what was your this is a leading question, but like, what was your first reaction to that? Or like, how did you respond to that initial, like first and second reaction? Kind of yeah. Thing? So I have, um, so I was raised in a church, um, at, like, you know, had to go to church every Sunday forced, but never felt uh, my story is quite a, a little bit like yours, you know? Um, so, you know, I'm a believer. Um, and when I went out to my car, I called my aunt who is, um, she's my, you know, kind of always been my faith based aunt that prayed with me and all of that. And I called her, she's in the States in Arizona. So it was, you know, a long distance call, but I called her as soon as I got into my car and I was angry. I was angry at God, you know, I'm like, why me? Like I've done everything right. You know, like I, you know, ate right, went to a natural path, you know, I did all the things, right? So why is this happening to me? So mm -hmm. I kind of took the angry approach at first and kind of more of the, um, yeah, angry and just really, and I think that's where the situational depression set in because that, that was like a secondary diagnosis, like the MS was first and then um, the situational depression was after that. Um, because I did take that kind of angry, um, and kind of losing hope, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I was, I was, uh, cause I was very active in my, like, as a recreation therapist, I helped people out of wheelchairs and got them moving and active, right? I didn't want right. to I didn't make that connection before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I worked with kids with special needs and I was like, I, I can't be in a wheelchair. Like this is not, you know, this is to me, it was 
devastating, absolutely devastating to get that kind of news. Mm -hmm. um, and so then, yeah, tell us about the journey after that. What was, what transpired? Yeah. So um, I really think actually, like, I, I don't even know when it was, but it was just one day I basically woke up and I was like, this is not going to be my story. This is not my story. <laughs> and I mean, as I said, I, I am a believer. So I did wake up every morning and, you know, prayed and, you know, used my devotional books and all the things. Um, but I added in gratitude. So I had this gratitude journal and I say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm always, I always tell everybody that it was the beginning of that gratitude journal that, uh, you know, started my healing journey. Um, because it was, I woke up every morning and used my gratitude journal. I started, you know, walking every day and I called, called them gratitude walks. I went on a, a walk out in nature and just, I was thankful for the, the most simplest things. Like in my, my journal, it would say, I, I'm thankful for these legs that can walk because my legs would give out on me. That was another symptom that I had. Like I had inflammation in my legs and they would uh, just give out on me at times, you know? So I was thankful for these legs that could walk. I would was thankful for these eyes that could see, you know? Like I was thankful for every little thing according to my symptoms in my journal. And then when I was on my walk, I was thankful for the trees, for everything that I could see, you know? And everything that was around me, you know? I just walked in full gratitude. And I, I lived a life of that and I did, make other changes I was like you know God we're gonna do this and we are going to you know I went I researched it all I was like letting go of no sugar no processed foods um I included healthy fats I move my body every single day um I used my oils for my headaches and all the things and I was determined that I was going to do it naturally. So I didn't take any of the medication that the doctors prescribed to me for either the depression or the MS. Mm -hmm. um, I, I said, thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to use my, um, my stuff. And uh, through gratitude and prayer, every single day, I started seeing a little change, you know. Um, wow. And then um, one thing I didn't mention was uh, they did have me booked to go. So, so I had to keep doing follow ups with the doctors, like I'm um, getting MRIs and and um, blood work and, and different things. Right. So and you said you didn't really live near that place. It was kind of a drive to get there. Well, that was the neurologist. I did live n near my doctor, but uh, the neurologist was um, two two hours away because uh, we didn't have a neurologist in in the city that I lived in at the time. And um, they had to, you know, forward all of my paperwork on to the neurologist. And for some reason, I kept calling the neurologist, kept on the doctors, you know, I wanted to know, get to the bottom of, you know, everything, right? And they, um, I finally got a hold of the neurology uh, department in Kingston, which is two hours from where I live. And just uh, thankfully, it was right across the road from where my daughter was going to university at the time, oh, wow. university. So everything kind of aligned. Um, and she's actually I uh, was thinking about going through to be a neurologist. So it was kind of interesting that that piece. But um, they didn't have any of my paperwork. They were like, we don't we don't have any we've had never had any request for your, you know, to for you to be seen. Nothing. We can't find anything on yeah. you. So then I contacted my doctor. There was a whole bunch of like a big mess, like of trying to get to the bottom of all of this. Right. And so it took probably uh, a year and a half for me to finally get in to see a neurologist. So all this time I'm, you know, doing all the things like I had mentioned, so you like know, a year um, and a half, you were supposed to be like on medications and just like waiting to go see the neurologist to see what this he or she would say about what to do next. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And, and a lot of tears and a lot of, you know, we, my family was 
was very scared, right? Like, you know, um, I am the person. I am the person for my whole household, right? Like, mama bear. Yeah, I'm the mama bear. And even with my parents, my brother, like I'm the, I'm the organizer, I'm the planner, I'm the do it all, right? You know, and in, in my, uh, um, sometimes I, I, I think I, I, I'm too much of a fixer, you know, I try to play God too much, right? You know, but I, they were all like, what is going on with mom, right? What's going on with Tanya? What is, you know, because, you know, it was, it didn't look good, right? You know, from anybody's perspective. And um, I, Tanya, I'm so sorry. Can I pause yeah. you for one second? Yes. I have bunnies and I have to yell at them for a moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> bunnies. Hey, big fluff. Jazzy, Jazzy, lay down, lay down. It's okay. Lay down. Otherwise, it'll like turn into a mm -hmm. tiny disaster over there. I have nine bunnies over here. Oh, and wow. Have <laughs> so sometimes when I look over here, they're doing something silly and I'm looking uh. at those bunnies. Okay. All right. Please continue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, my daughter, Emmy, would want to, she keeps asking me for a bunny. She's like, you had bunnies growing up. I would love to have one. <laughs> well, she can follow my bunny Instagram and she asked me all the questions about awesome. owning a bunny. <laughs> Yeah, taking, so I wouldn't say owning, actually. I say taking care of a bunny. They're mm -hmm. in my hair. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, let's. let's um, so, yeah, so finally I got in to see the neurologist, um, mm -hmm. and that was in 2019. And um, I took my daughter that wanted to be a neurologist uh, in there with me. And uh, we were just both amazed at what the neurologist said because. First, she started was, out like a year and a half later when you finally got in to see. That's them. right. Yes. And you've yeah. been doing all the stuff and you've been doing the gratitude walks yes. and the gratitude journaling. Yeah. And I was feeling fine by the time I like I was feeling so great. Like I said, every day on my gratitude journey and my faith walk, like I was getting stronger and stronger day by day. Like I could wow. I was able to start, you know doing more, not sleeping as much, you know, a lot of things changed in my life. Um, but there was still a little bit there, like, but not to the extent of, of what it was, you know? Um, and I would say more so kind of the, maybe the situational depression, right? Because I had this diagnosis that, you know, and, um, and just kind of getting through the day to day of, this kind of over my head. Right. And mm -hmm. so the first thing the neurologist said was, um, you know, Tanya, I know this isn't going to help you, but I'm making a promise that I will never let this happen to anyone else. Again, you should not have had to wait this long to get into a neurologist to hear that you do not have MS. <laughs> and, you know, Brianna, my daughter and I just kind of looked at each other and I'm like, okay, well, when, then what, what is it? Right. Like then what's, you like know, I all the symptoms. Of yeah. Right. And she did all the testing. She looked at my, um, at, uh, you know, my brain scan and all that. And she goes, I can't explain it to be honest. She goes, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Because the MRI said that there was something. There was like a lesion. Yeah. Lesion is what uh, they call it. So, it was kind of unexplainable in her, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I took it as an opportunity for my daughter to meet a neurologist, you know, cause she wanted to. Like, okay, well know. now we're having an interview. Yeah. With the <laughs> <laughs> and, and then ask a lot of great questions. That's too, actually the you know? like opportunity if it took so long to see. Yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, she was kind of like, you know, I, I, you know, I can't treat you. I have nothing more to offer you, you know, because you wow. don't have MS. She so goes, the symptoms were gone. The lesion was gone. Yeah. Lesion. Yeah. Like she just, and she couldn't explain it. She, she medically couldn't explain all the symptoms that I had. And mm -hmm. so I even asked her, I said, well, what are my next steps then? Like, you know, what about the, the headaches, the debilitating headaches that I would have and, you know, all these things. And, and she, she said, well, you know, what did you do that changed 
that changed some of these symptoms. And I just told her that, you know, I walk every day in gratitude. I write in my gratitude journal. I said, you know, I, I pray. And, uh, and she said, all she said was, well, just continue on doing what you're doing because <laughs> clearly it worked. <laughs> continue on with that, ma'am. Continue <laughs> on. <laughs> like I seriously felt like I was the first, um, client she had ever had like I kind of stumped her you know <laughs> like she was yeah. like I don't know what to say I don't know what to say about this right so so yeah I um I always tell everybody that you know I was on a journey that you know brought me to you know through gratitude and and prayer and just really slowing down and simplifying my life like I, I will never go back to the life I had before this, um, you know, and and that itself is is a miracle. If you knew what my life was like before, <laughs> you know, now I'm living in my dream home, you know, on the lake and I, I still go for walks daily and, you know, keep up the the joy lifestyle of, um, you know, just uh, soaking in my my daily um, devotional and time with with God and, and, and I'm grateful. I live, I live in full gratitude every single day. I'm grateful for everything. Wow. Um, can you, okay. Well, first of all, it's like, uh, so the people in the comments, cause they're hearing the story for the first time, they're like, that's amazing. You know, fire emojis. I put some up, some of them up there. Supernatural, um, supernatural is god's natural it's a good one yeah and then just like so amazing because i mean i've actually heard a lot of testimonials in my life and a lot of miracles and witness things myself um but like every time and like when you just talk to someone who is not used to hearing that it's like sorry what happened <laughs> like how's that possible like what um but that's kind of like that's what happens. And you just to like, be clear, you don't have to be a Christian for that to happen. Cause like other people have experienced miraculous and miracles and healing. Most of the people I've heard from would call themselves Christians, but I know that like other people have experienced like wild things and it's like, yeah, this gratitude is heavenly. And, um, yeah, I'm like, you said you were praying as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and asking, like, I'm sure you're asking for that healing, right? Mm -hmm. but also leaning into that gratitude. So I just, I mean, I'm not going to try to explain it because it's not explainable, but I just like, I love how your story has the gratitude and then something so tangible. Cause you could say like, oh, I wasn't feeling like I was feeling terrible for a year and a half, but you actually had like MRIs and like professional medical people like see you. Mm -hmm. And then see you at the end and say, well, this is not the same as it was a year and a half ago. So like you can tell yourself that and like I would believe your story. But it's like interesting to also have those like facts on paper too. <laughs> right? Yes. Like, yeah. No, like this is what they showed and this now it's not there. <laughs> and I don't feel like that anymore. I feel good. That's right. So. Yes. And I'm symptom free. Like I haven't had any of those symptoms um, even since that day that you know, she basically declared that I am healthy and, and she's like, you know, you can look, you got actually a very healthy brain, you know? So, um, and healthy brain. yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, I, uh, I, I took it. I was like, yes, yes, I am. I am. I'm healthy and, and I'm going to continue being healthy. So good. Well, thank you so much, Tanya, for sharing there. There is one last thing I wanted to ask you. Um, if you don't mind sharing. And I asked, I did a pre-recording yesterday that will be shown in the bonus day of Sarah Camille. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm curious what everybody, like some people are interested in Buddhism and um, the, the word meditation gets used a lot. And everyone has like a different practice of style that they do. Some people really mm -hmm. love breathing. I actually really love breathing too. I just I just don't seem to get out to the, I wish I could just breathe with people every day, like go and do something. Um, but, and some people go to, for walks in the forest. And then a lot of that's talked about in church is like sitting down with your Bible and like reading the scripture verses, which is totally awesome and beautiful. 
um, mm-hmm. but also like super boring at times. Um, and there was a time when I was younger when it was like, do your devotions, like do your quiet time. And it'd be like, you're sitting there and you're like, I don't know what's supposed to be happening. And I'm kind of bored and I won't fall asleep. And I don't know what these scripture verses mean. Um, but then like, as my journey has gone on, I've noticed things about my character and personality is that I don't like, I don't know if this is a male female thing, but no, it's totally not because there's lots of women like that too. But some people love to memorize scripture verses and then know the scripture verses and then say them. Um, but like my brain just doesn't work like mm-hmm. that right now. Anyways, <laughs> I was talking with Sarah yesterday and um, like sometimes I'll ask for a scripture verse um, and then Holy Spirit will like pop like John 2.24 or something in my brain. I'll be like, I don't know what scripture verse that is. And then I'll look it up. And I'll be like, oh, that is very, like, appropriate to my situation. And thank you for that. Um, So with that said, it's like reading, coming across scripture and seeing people's scripture verses on Facebook. And then there's, like, the Hebrew and the Greek and the history and the culture behind it and, like, the linguistics of it. So it's become a lot more interesting to me. And in 33 years, it's like one story. Bible story or one scripture verse actually have like a hundred layers. And the first time you read it, you're like, oh, interesting story. And then the second time you read it, you're like, oh my gosh, it means that. And then like the 10th time you read it, you're like, oh my gosh, it means that. And there's like actually something really mystical about that. (laughs) So it's like, like doors within doors, unlocking things. And if you would have said that to me when I was like 18, I would have been like, oh, that's fantastic. You're so in love with the scriptures. Um, that sounds boring, but like now to me, I'm just like, oh my God, it's so interesting. Actually, it's super interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, so (laughs) what I'm asking you is what does like your, um, quiet time look like your time meditating or in prayer? Like what, what are the aspects of what does that look like for you? Um, so it's changed over time. Um, so maybe a little bit like what you had mentioned. So one thing I didn't mention is I, um, I like I grew up in the church, um, but I'm and I'm always been a seeker of truth. Like that's one thing I definitely know about myself is I'm a I'm a truth seeker, right? You know, and I went to a Seventh Day Adventist private school too um, when I was seeking truth, and I tried every church out there. I think I've tried every denomination possible, right? And I could never find what I felt like was my people or like where I fit in. And then it's it didn't take until, you know, at four children later and, and an adult woman that I feel like I just fit in with Jesus, you know, kind of thing. Right. Like it's just uh, and I see Jesus as fun. Right. I'm a very fun. I love to have fun with my girls. They think I'm silly and weird. And, you know, so so I find sometimes my quiet time does mean sitting in in my 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 girls call it my uh uh my quiet time chair i have my own little chair that you know faces the window looking out at the lake you know sometimes it's that and and reading i do have a devotional i read every morning and and then i i read the the um it in i love the passion translation so i read it through that because i just feel like it sits well with me um but i love water. So I have always, even my husband and I didn't get married in a church. We got married in front of water because that's where I feel the presence of, of God is at, um, by the water. So, um, my quiet time, a lot of the time, maybe, um, maybe a walk, maybe, um, in front of like in my quiet time chair, or it might be, um, you know, on the dock. Right. So it's, it's kind of all a lot of different things. And, and I did go through a time where it was listening to, you know, quiet music and, you know, just closing my eyes and just being still. Right. And I think that that was when this journey began because I didn't know how to be still back then. Cause I was always, I used to always say it was like I was on a hamster wheel, right. You know, as a mom, just constantly going, going, going. And I didn't know how to slow down and quiet, quiet mind and, and really uh, receive the rest. Receive, Yes. I didn't know how to do that. Right. I was never taught that in church. 
or any of my or background. <laughs> yeah, right? And so it took almost me having this sad say, but having this diagnosis and this thing happen to me in my life to slow me down, to get me in that quiet moment to just be. And that can be anywhere. That can be in my chair. That can be out in the woods. That can be just walking down the road. That can be on the, by the lake. Wherever I am, I can find that quiet moment to just, you know, be filled with the Holy Spirit and just really feel like I'm in his presence, I guess, is really the best way to put it for me. That's how it works for me, you know. Um, and I never felt that in a church until just recently. I have recently uh, found a church that works for me. So <laughs> it only took 48 years. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I say even to my daughters, you know, like, you know, just just begin talking. And that's what my, like my 22 year old, she'll tell you the vet, like, you know, as a twin from a 22 year old's perspective that grew up in, um, I, I raised them in a Pentecostal church. She will say, she goes, I talk to God, like he's my bro, you know, like she just, she just talks to him. Right. And she just, she's like, it doesn't matter where I am. Right. Like if I just need that moment to just almost like, for her, it's like a grounding and kind of like, there's a lot going on in my life right now. And I just need to clear my mind. You know, mm -hmm. she said, I just talk to him like he's my bro. <laughs> yeah. So I love that, right? I think you kind of, whatever works for you, right? Like it's, uh, it's um, that's just what works for me is kind of doing it where a little different each day, maybe. There, um, there a couple things pop, popped into my head there. One of them, I was, when I was in youth group, I was on the leadership board and I was coming from, I mean, that's a long story, but I was coming from more of a re religious background with my mom in like a, I'm going to say strange, um, sect of Christianity. And so that was sort of part of my foundation, but lots of good things as well too. And that's part of like what brought me to where I am so thankful for it um but I had like some strange ideas in the foundation and when I was at that table with them one day with the other youth and the youth pastor and they were like okay we're gonna pray about like we're making we're organizing these events we're gonna pray over and stuff and they were praying out loud but they were praying so casually I was like rude like do you know who you're talking to yeah. um I was like you're supposed to like get in a solemn like bored <laughs> serious state and then you're supposed to use some fancy words so that god knows that you respect him and that there's distance between us um you know like if i was going to articulate those feelings mm -hmm. but but then i was like oh like we can just talk to god god casually and like not be afraid and not act like there's a huge distance because like I'm created in God's image like like everything about spirit and creation I'm like wrapped up in it um so it's like hmm, okay well I guess I don't need to be so like serious or whatever you know and so that was just that was a moment for me when I was like oh Okay. <laughs> this is nice, actually. <laughs> um, yeah. There's something else popped into my head. But yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. It was really helpful. And when I heard you talking about like your experience, your Christian journey of looking for different churches and feeling like you couldn't quite find the right spot, I was like, I, I left Rose's comment up there because she's like, you're my kindred spirit. So many similarities. Oh, <laughs> this is impactful for me. Um, yeah. And when you and I talked, we're like, oh my gosh, we have a lot in common. And yeah. like, I've spent like the last 10 years or something, like actually asking God, like, Lord, please send people to me that like, that I can, that understand me and that kind of feel what is, you know, what's going on. Um, and then in, in the past four years, I have found quite a few of them through the Christian entrepreneurs group I was in and I started a Holy Spirit intuitives group and then Nanette Foster who was um I'm not sure if she's still watching but um she has a group intuitive daughters of God which I invited you to and mm -hmm. you're in there now um and just like finding all these other people who are 
Christ followers and mystics and seeking and curious and entrepreneurs and creative um, and just curious. Mm-hmm. Like curiosity is a word and just being curious is a word that came up for me a lot, um, especially in 2020 and then just continued on. It's like just being a lifelong learner and being curious. Then we don't get rigid and we don't think we have all the answers and stuff. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's me for sure. Absolutely. And I, I totally resonated with with when you said like, so I I too had a hard time saying that I was a Christian because of kind of what kind of came with that, right? Like it didn't it didn't sit well with me because anyone I saw that was a Christian wasn't all that kind, you know? And I was all about, you know, loving everyone and and being kind. And so I, I had a hard time with it, um, you know, as well. So for me, I just say I'm a believer, right? Because that just what feels feels right for me because I am. I'm a believer and and I have always been a believer, but I have changed the my eyes have opened even more to um to receive more and to hear, you know. So I, I really feel like, you know, it's uh it's been a journey. Um and it's got me to where I feel like I know who I am and whose I am, right? So I feel pretty confident in that now. <laughs> That's so good. Okay, two things. One is um, the Yahweh Circle tonight. I just want to remind everyone, and then I have one more question for you. Um, so the Yahweh Circle tonight is about experiencing the present presence of Holy Spirit, because now we've like talked about it and heard someone's story. Um, and it doesn't matter if you've been a Christ follower for 100 years or you're not a Christ follower yet. Um, I encourage, or whatever, (laughs) I encourage you to come and like experience spirit together. Um, So we will start with a time of gratitude and then we will go into the, the listening prayer. And I, I talk a lot about Holy Spirit in, in the Yahweh circle because like that's, I'm not going to try to explain the Trinity right now (laughs) because I'll get into that on another conversation, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, Holy Spirit is like, Spirit is with us in that Yahweh time, that Yahweh circle time. And it's just so beautiful. So I hope that you can make it out tonight. And that's at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It depends how many people join, but it's usually an hour and a half. And so that will be a time of just like sitting together. There's like big chunks of quiet time where I just, we all mute ourselves and we're just listening or journaling. Um, so as a, an introvert, I love that, that I can organize times where we can be quiet together. (laughs) I'm like, oh, that's so brilliant. I don't have to be like, be at a party, being extroverted. I can just like organize something, be with other people, but we can have like 10 minutes of quiet time. I think that's brilliant. Um, And then the other thing I wanted to ask you is, what do you do um, for your work? And would you like to share a little bit? And I'll make sure, or maybe if you could go in the Facebook group and put your um, link in there. Absolutely. Yeah. So I am a life and wellness coach um, for moms. And also, um, I'm still a registered recreation therapist. Um, So I combine both my life and wellness coaching with recreation therapy. So I'm a very unique coach, (laughs) um, combining the two because I worked with, um, I worked in mental health as a recreation therapist, but I also uh, worked in pediatrics with children with special needs. So I have such a heart for for moms that are going through um, things, especially with um, their teenagers or or any any of their children, right? And and I've walked it. I've walked it all with having four four daughters that are very very different. And uh, um, you know, so there's nothing that I haven't <laughs> kind of experienced. Um, and then I too was, you know, one of those uh, rebellious teenagers myself once once upon a time, right? So, so I feel um, I have such a heart to serve moms and and walk the journey with them. So that's kind of what I'm up to now. Um, and my business is called Joyful Hearts Wellness, um, and I do one to one coaching uh, with uh, moms, and um, I have a couple teenagers that I coach as well. Um, and, uh, I still, I'm starting to, I think, get back into some of my rec therapy where I'm going to start, um, I'm a kinder music educator as well. So I'm going to start, I think, teaching, um, some, uh, 
it's called drone, but I kind of change it differently. Um, so it's drumming and uh, also some music classes for for uh, little toddlers. So oh my gosh, I was, I, I, I was a nanny. I was a nanny. We went to a music class. It's so much fun. Like with the oh puppies. yeah, so much fun. Um, okay, that's great. So will you um, maybe just like say your title or um, some of those things that you offer and then put your your website link in the comments of our live feed inside the Facebook group? Absolutely. And then yes. if anyone wants to contact you, they can do that. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us on day it's one. Fun. Gratitude and Focus Challenge. I'm so glad that Divine interaction found us and there was a bit of like extra connection work to do there so thank you jesus yeah. um <laughs> for making that happen so good yeah. um yeah okay i like i almost just want to like stay live all day and just like <laughs> but uh, i'm gonna let you go <laughs> and um yeah everyone who is able to come back tonight for 7 p.m for the yahweh circle and then tomorrow is friday i will be live with um yeah, I will be live with Terry and he's going to share some of his life experience and his interaction, like interactions with angels and like things appearing and stuff. It's very interesting. Um, I follow his Facebook feed and I'm just like, what is happening over there? So cool. <laughs> but also he has lots of other amazing parts of his story too. So I'm not exactly sure what he's going to pull out, but I know it's going to be good. Um, Nikolai is saying, thank you for this beautiful co-creation Monique and Tanya mm, yeah, so good I really enjoyed this time okay Tanya I'm going to um, take you behind stage and then we can chit chat a little bit um, not live and then and then we'll be on our way okay all right thank you this has been fun <laughs> yeah thank you for being with us Tanya okay all right thank you everyone oh I guess I can take this off would you put there a star? We're going to put a star there. Thank you, Rose. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for being with us live. And yeah, thank you. It's so fun. There's people that I know and I've known online and friends that I know in person too. But then um, the speakers, friends and like friends of friends are also in here too. So it's really fun to like get to know other people. Um, so the assignment for today, I'm going to post that in the next 10 minutes. Um, but part of that assignment or joy bringing action today is to introduce yourself to us. Um, not overly complicated. Some people don't like to put a picture of themselves. You can if you want, or you can put a picture of your pet or a beautiful picture um, of the outdoors that's near you. So, and if you have questions or you're like, oh, I would love if you asked one of the next speakers this question, um, put it in the comments or I, yeah, better if you put it in the comments somewhere and make a separate post because this is really fun. I feel like I'm kind of like on a talk show and I'm interested in what you're interested in. So let me know what you're interested in. And then I can make sure that I ask some of the other guests that. And um, in the comments too, if you have a question, um, I guess I could do a, a Q and A time for like the last four minutes for the next speaker. So if you um, have questions, we'll, we'll do that next time. Okay, so join us tonight, 7 p.m. Yahweh Circle, Pacific Standard Time. And we'll be back again tomorrow at 11 a.m. with Terry Core. Okay, peace. Have a great day. <laughs> Blessings. <laughs>